second video learning how to do one step equations if you watched my previous video on this we talked about how to solve using addition and subtraction okay went into some conversation about what an inverse operation is inverse operation means the opposite operation of what you're dealing with so in that previous video when we saw addition we wanted to use subtraction and vice versa when we saw subtraction we wanted to use addition now in this video we're going to be dealing with solving through multiplication if you see a multiplication problem you need to use division to cancel or eliminate and if you see division you're going to need to multiply to cancel or eliminate so right now i have two examples up here and i am going to show a third example the one that will typically catch kids off guard and cause errors or mistakes within their work. So pay attention to the very end on this video because that last and third problem that isn't up here right now is typically the one that kids will make mistakes on. So here we go. Let's start with the first one where we see three times X. Whenever in algebra you see a variable and a coefficient is what we call the number attached to the variable side by side, not having any operation shown next to it, we know we're dealing with multiplication. So this is saying 3 times x equals 27. Okay, now some of these problems you'll be able to do mentally, but we want to practice the steps and how to solve them because we're going to get into a point in our math uh, career where we're going to actually have to do multiple things to solve these problems, and we want to know how we're going to write that work out. So to solve this problem, you're going to do the opposite of multiplying. You're going to divide. I like to show division as just a bar, just like a fraction, and you're going to put that same value underneath. The reason that this is going to eliminate it is because it's going to create a 1x. So 3 divided by 3 makes a 1, so I cancel, scratch that out. And if you're going to do it to the left side, you also have to do it to the right. So if we do divided by 3 over here, we're going to be left with only an x on the left side. And then we have to figure out what is 27 divided by 3, which we all know is that beautiful number 9. All right, so we now know that 9 is the only number that we could plug in here to make this a true statement. Uh, 3 times 9 would equal 27. That would just be a quick check to make sure that the value you got is correct. So that's using division. And you guessed it, the next one is going to be using multiplication. Okay, best thing you can do, best question you can ask yourself is just what operation am I seeing? Therefore, it's going to tell you what operation to do. So we see division happening, meaning we're going to multiply. I like for my students to put parentheses around this entire um, expression and then multiply by the value that's being divided by. So we're doing the opposite of dividing by 7 is multiplying by 7. That will cancel out your 7s leaving you with nothing but an X on the left side. Now again, just like over here, if we divide by three on the left, we have to divide by three on the right. In this problem, if we're gonna multiply by seven on the left, we are going to multiply by seven on the right. Five times seven, okay? We know our multiplication. Five times seven is gonna give me a grand total of 35. And just like that, we have solved two one-step equations. One using division, the other using multiplication. Now, showing these steps the same way every time is going to come in handy because in your future, you're going to be dealing with what's called multi-step equations. And you're going to be doing this as your final step at the end of all this other work. So practices, get good at them because this is not going away. If you're a pre-algebra student right now, 7th, 8th grade, Okay, don't expect this to be the last time you're doing this skill. You're going to be doing it over and over again. Okay, as teachers are going to make you really have this down because it's going to be something you're going to be using in your math classroom all the time. Okay, now let's talk about that last and final one, the one that typically is going to cause students to make some errors. I'll just make a problem up real quick. Let's say 2 sevenths x equals, uh, let's say 4. Okay. If I gave you this problem, I said 2 sevenths times x equals 4. Now, you can divide by 2 sevenths, but divide, oh, man, how are they going to ruin my video like that? Um, you can divide by 2 sevenths. That is something you can do. If you know what 2 sevenths is as a decimal, you can turn it into that decimal, work from there. So you probably use things like 1 half where you know it's 0.5 or 1 fourth where you know it's 0.25 or 25 hundredths. Um, those are typically easier ones to use decimals for, but there's a quick, easy way when you have a fraction attached 
to a variable through multiplication. Here we don't. Here we had a three. It's a whole number. So we just divided by the whole number. You can't, it's not really the best route dividing by two sevenths because taking four and dividing it by two sevenths is a, kind of a you're making it more challenging than it needs to be. Okay, the best way to do this is to multiply by what we call kind of a different word if you've never heard it before the reciprocal. Okay, so what a reciprocal is, let me just give you a quick example of what reciprocals are. Reciprocals. And I hope I spelled that right. I am not the best at spelling, but we'll check it later when I'm done. And then if I made a fool of myself, so be it. Okay, one-eighth. The reciprocal of one-eighth is eight over one. The reciprocal of three-fourths is four-thirds. The reciprocal of nine-elevenths is eleven-ninths. The reciprocal of one third is three over one. So I'm hoping you're picking up the pattern here. A reciprocal is just a flip, just a flip of that fraction. The one was on top, now it's on bottom. The eight was on bottom, now it's on top. Three fourths to four thirds. You're just flipping those numbers. So what would the reciprocal of two sevenths be? That's right. It is seven halves or seven over two that will cancel out the coefficient, the number that's attached to the variable, okay? Now, if you're going to multiply by 7 halves on the left side, you're going to multiply by 7 halves on the right side. And multiplying a fraction times a whole number is easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's top number multiplied by the whole number, 4 times 7. We have 28 over bottom number. Denominator stays the same. 2. 28 over 2, or 28 halves, can then be simplified down to 14. The only number that will make this true is a 14. All right, well, I hope that this helped. Multiplying by the reciprocal when you have a fraction attached to the variable, when the coefficient is a fraction, use your reciprocal and multiplication. When you see division, use multiplication. When you see multiplication, use division. Inverse operations. All right. So one-step equations, you're going to be doing them a lot. So make sure that you have that skill dialed in. Y'all, good luck on your next test.